to go ahead and get into the video examples and, and all of that good stuff. Um, I want to be pretty, uh, use your time wisely and also leave a little bit of time at the end for questions. Um, so look out for that. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to drop those in the chat or the Q&A box and we'll kind of do all of those at the end there. So the very first thing we're going to do is take a brief tour of what this athletics webinar was going to be. It was going to be pre-COVID-19, which was a very different world that we lived in even just two, three months ago. Um, as I was preparing for this webinar, I was thinking, oh, well, in fall, everything will look different. Everything will go back to normal. And that just hasn't been the case. And we live in a very different world. And of course, the safety and health of our students is the most important thing. So completely understand that we're all coming at this from a different perspective than two or three months ago. Um, but I did want to take just a brief second. I'm not going to play the videos, but I wanted you to have these um, kind of in your back pocket. If we approach spring of 2021 and things are st starting to open up, um, more kids are back on campus, hopefully we have a vaccine, all of these good things. I want you to have those kind of as resources for you available um, when you're planning those calendar events as well. And then from there, we're going to shift into the stewardship and fundraising calendar uh, for fall 2020, uh, analyzing what are the touch points that are missing for, from your communication as you know, on-campus events aren't happening, in-person meetings aren't going to be as feasible. And then some, what are some ideas uh, for virtual connections in place of those? So we're going to go through just some um, ideas as well as uh, a profile of one of our really outstanding partners, one of the things that they're trying to do, highlighting one of their most recent videos. Um, that kind of took the place of what was going to be an in-person uh, major donor touch point. And then from there, we're going to shift to the recruitment calendar. I'll probably leave a little less time for this just because um, we saw from the poll, there's not as, as many admissions counselors or admissions people in this webinar, but I did want to touch on uh, what are the touch points for admissions, what are they missing, what are they needing, um, as well as ideas for video connections to replace um, what potential students questions are going to be, what they're going to need from admissions to make the decision for fall 2021, which seems six years away. I don't know about you guys, but that seems like an impossible time to get to as this year has already felt like 10 years. Um, but the final thing I wanted to do here is just touch on the thank you toolkit. Um, a lot of this is going to be really broad, um, I, brainstorming ideas, uh, looking at some specific examples, but I really did want to root it um, in the end with some concrete tools that you can use uh, to help you get these campaigns off the ground. So that's where we're going to um, head today. I do want to check the Q&A, and I'm going to make sure I don't X out this time uh, to check that. Let's see. Um, someone asked, how are schools who will not have fall athletic competitions plan on using thank you to communicate with donors, especially for solicitations? That is an excellent question, and I hope we're going to address that a little bit more in the webinar. Um, and then Lauren said, apologies if I missed this answer, but will we receive a recording? Yes, Lauren, I will send a recording as well as the slides, so you'll have a link to the webinar, um, a link to the uh, video examples in the slides after the webinar. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and hop into just very quickly some before COVID-19 video examples. Again, these aren't super useful at the current moment, but I hope that these will be um, in the upcoming months and as you're planning, planning for spring, um, that these actually will be a little more <laughs> applicable and that in-person events will be happening uh, for your, your college or your university. The very first one I want to highlight here, and again, I'm not going to play these. These are just linked, and you'll be able to um, play these after uh, the webinar. I just didn't want to take up too much time. But this one definitely is still applicable. This is just uh, an example from Biola the University. They have a really great system set up for thanking donors as soon as they donate. Um, and this is just one of the videos that they get sent. Um, it's a really great, really personal. It's just uh, their director holding a cell phone, recording a quick thank you video and it plugs to their Athletics Week of Giving leaderboard. So it's a really great campaign that's timely, and then it also gives the donor a next step. So where do you want them to go next? Check out the Giving leaderboard, um, giving them that, that next step and really leading them into uh, the communication and relationship that you wanna have with them. So I just think this is a really amazing thank you example. And with that in mind, this is a little less um, applicable, but maybe maybe not. Maybe golf is the, the one sport that is still 
very socially distant, so this might be still something in your wheelhouse that you, you can use. But the Sun Devils Club uh, did a amazing first golf tournament of the season update video, and this was filmed on a beautiful sunny morning. You can see the sunrise is coming up behind them on the beautiful golf course there. And this is just an update. There was no um, appeal. There wasn't a thank you for any particular gift. It was just an update to let them know um, we are starting our golf season. And again, that call to action button, which is that button beneath the video there, is letting them know what the next step should be for them. And that should be to go check out Golf Stat and see how the Sun Devils are doing, stay in touch with them. Um, this is just a really great touch point that is not an ask or a thank you, and I think it's just a really great example of how you can do that well. And then finally, uh, giving day messages. This is a huge thing for thank you users. Um, in the past, the fall is a major, major time for giving days, and I imagine if your giving day was scheduled for the fall, you are looking at completely redoing that. It's going to look very, very different um, than giving day of 2019. But whether you are using it for appeals for your giving day, or you're using thank you for thank yous after someone has given on the giving day, incorporating video is a really important part of that communication, um, especially if that video can show those who are directly impacted uh, by a donor's gift. And that's why I've linked here to the Duquesne University <laughs> video. They did an amazing job. Um, they got a few members of the hockey team. Um, you can tell they're definitely a little bit nervous as they film the video, but they do a really amazing job. Uh, it's just very short. It's very sweet. It says, thank you so much. Here's what your gift's going towards. We appreciate you. And again, that call to action button is really great um, at leading the donor to your next step. What is it that you're driving them to? Even though this is a thank you, uh, they want to make sure to stay in touch, stay up to date on what that giving day is looking like. So that is just the, the quick introduction. Again, I didn't want to spend too much time on uh, pre-COVID-19, you know, when you can have students on campus or film at games, because that's just not the world that we live in at the moment. So this is kind of shifting that into communicating with donors um, in a fall 2020 where there is no athletics, um, there are no games scheduled. Um, I don't know, and if you guys want to throw in the chat, um, if your organization has a specific plan in place, or if you are still waiting uh, for a TBD, we're going to assess come August, we're going to assess come September. Um, I'd love to hear where people are at as far as uh, sports games being canceled or um, maybe just no, no one's going to be in the stands. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about where everyone's coming from on that. But the very first thing uh, that I recommend doing and I'm sure this has already been on top of mind for anyone who is working in athletics or is annual giving walking along alongside the athletics department, is making a full list of what touch points that donors are losing. Um, and this is going to look like games, tours of new facilities, um, whatever is unique and special to your organization, what are those touch points that they are no longer going to be able to have, um, and mostly to do with in-person events. Um, so just having that list, knowing they're missing these five touch points. Um, and then once you have that list, pulling down to the next step here, what did those touch points accomplish? And I have two different examples here and then two solutions. Um, and these are very simple. So I know some of these events are going to be, we, there is no replacement for them. Um, but I encourage you to make, make that list of what donors are losing, um, whether it's a meet and greet with scholarship students, Maybe it's a tour of a new facility that their donation went towards. And then how those events can be translated into video. So a thank you video from student athletes. And I know someone already asked, how do we still do appeals uh, during a season when there is no games? And I think putting student athletes at the front of that message is really, really important. Um, having them be the center of the video and making sure that your donors know um, that there are still student athletes when there are not games and their donations are still valued and important. And then following up, uh, maybe a coach or a member of leadership leads a virtual tour of a new facility or tour of uh, new equipment that's been uh, donated, even though they couldn't see it in person. If you have those higher level donors, of course you'd want to have them on campus. That might just not be feasible 
or an option at the moment. So having just a, a familiar face recording that video and uh, giving them that tour and letting them know what their donation is going towards. And then this uh, final piece here, um, I think this is going to be a really, really strange time for donor relations, but I think it's also going to be a really creative time where direct mail and in-person events aren't as feasible. What are the communication pieces that can be added in your new very open calendar? So thinking outside the box of, you know, here's what our donors are losing right now, but what is it that they need that we weren't giving them before? Um, and if that's a glimpse into more of the students' lives, if that's uh, looking at, you know, what is your donation really going towards? Um, how can you accomplish those new communication pieces? And maybe they'll actually become new staples in, you know, the calendar for next fall. And so I wanted to jump into just a few ideas of what that can look like. And again, these are very, very vague uh, as your communication is going to be so unique to who you're communicating, you know, which donors, which group, and it's gonna depend on what message that you're sending out. Um, but these are some kind of broader ideas that you can work from as you're brainstorming those ideas um, for communication pieces. And the very first one here is repurposing footage from last year to kind of build hype when you have those opening dates to announce. So uh, when, when games are opening up, even if it is just, you know, students only, athletes only, uh, building up the hype for that, because that is a huge accomplishment for, you know, that day that we can go ahead and announce with pride, you know, <laughs> these are the dates that we're gonna be able to do this and get things back to some semblance of normal and definitely hype that up. Um, that's such a, a feeling of nostalgia and it's such a great thing for, for donors to see and alumni as well. And then the second thing here is just interviewing student athletes, uh, finding out, you know, what are, what are their lives like, look like during COVID-19? What is campus like? What classes are they taking online versus in person? What does their workout regimen look like now? Um, things like that. It can be, you know, as serious or as goofy as you'd like. I think probably a combination of both is really helpful. Um, and then uh, birthday messages. Um, any other touch point that isn't an appeal or thank you specifically, just keeping your organization top of mind. Um, these birthday messages can come from you and your staff, they can come from students, they can come from coaches, um, and they can be very quick and easy to record. If you'd like any examples, I'm happy to follow up with you and, and send those as well, but they are just such a great message to send um, at a time where you really wanna keep top of mind for donors. And then finally, just updates from coaches or leadership. Um, as things are unfolding and, and we find out more and more what the schedule is going to look like uh, for fall and for spring as well, just keeping donors and alumni and current students up to date on what does that look like. And I'm sure they have already gotten really long um, emails, maybe from a president or a coach, um, but it's so much, uh, so much a different experience to have it come through video. It's very personal. Um, and it means a lot more to just watch someone um, and see a face to a message as opposed to just reading a text. Um, so I'd encourage you wherever possible to kind of break up those updates with video as opposed to just assuming this can only be direct mail or this can only be an email copy. And then that's all very, you know, broad, <laughs> seems very, you know, uh, how do I actually translate this into my campaigns? Um, so I took uh, a few minutes uh, last week, Jamie Griffiths was very sweet and allowed me to interview her to get a few ideas of how this looks for them, what they're planning as they build up to fall 2020. And the first thing that kind of shocked me, she was like, last year CMU had 13 mailings and that has completely shifted this year. They don't have access to their office. Everyone is going to be working remotely in her office since they aren't working directly with students. Um, their organization has decided that it's best for them to work from home for the remainder of the year. So that's shifted into 14 videos, something that they can work on from home, something that isn't uh, going to be you know, sent off to the printer. It can be really timely. <laughs> you know, things are changing every week now. Uh, so having the ability to have a lot more control over those videos than you would over the mailings. And I really love this quote from her. She said, it's more important than ever for people to see what's going on on campus um, because there is so much news, social media, 
everything looked very grim. Um, and that certainly isn't to diminish what's going on at all, but she just mentioned it's really important to let people know that you know life is going on, organization is still teaching students, um, and student athletes are still on campus uh, regardless of uh, whether or not the, the games are being played at the moment. But what was really interesting, uh, she was very upfront with saying, you know, we don't have it figured out. We're still planning the year and still waiting uh, for things to be decided. And the two biggest hurdles uh, for her when it came to filming with student athletes were, will they be on campus? Some students were unsure if they're even coming back to campus. They might just work completely remotely from wherever they live. And then the second thing is, are they willing? Uh, those are two big things uh, that they weren't quite sure if they were gonna run into issues with uh, once they start pushing for student video content. And we're gonna drive a little bit more into solutions when we get to those thank you toolkit slides. But I did wanna point out here, just a possible solution here is being the, the video request tool within thank you, because this is something that you can use regardless if they are on campus or they are at their house. It is an email that you can send them and they can click a link and record a video that saves directly to your video library. So it removes a lot of the you know, scheduling of trying to find a time to meet with the student, making sure that they're you know, socially distant shoot for the student, um, but this really helps eliminate a lot of those, those problems there. And then finally, answering the are they willing, uh, especially if this is not the semester that they were intending to have. This is, you know, they came to, to college to play their sports. Um, I would highly recommend reaching out to their coaches and student life reps, uh, finding out where those students are at, um, and then having, within Think you can actually choose who the sender for that campaign is, and if the coaches or student life representatives are okay with it, I'd highly recommend having the request come from their coach or coming from uh, someone on their team that they know uh, for that video content, because I think you're going to get a lot better response rate if they're recognizing that name and they know where that's coming from. Um, and then I wanted to end, so those were kind of the struggles, but I did want to end the slide with some successes, uh, two campaigns that they've tried so far in the last month that have done really, really well. The first was an introduction to a new coach that was sent to all athletes, athletic alumni and former coaches. And that wasn't an appeal, the, the call to action was to go to the Facebook page and like that page. But in addition to the amount of likes that they got, they also got a lot of really positive responses. So people not only clicked that share button and that follow button, uh, but they replied to the message as well. So that was a really great touch point. Again, keeping your organization top of mind, even when those games aren't going on. And then the one I did wanna show you is just a welcome video for the 1896 Society. This is something that would typically be in person. So this was an, an event that they would invite all of the uh, major gift donors to, uh, to let them know here's how the construction's going and give them a tour of the facilities. That isn't, wasn't possible this year. So instead um, they sent this video and you can actually see uh, the guy is standing in front of the construction. So you still get a glimpse of what that looks like um, even though this is just a video. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Congratulations. Based on your recent major gift, it is my honor and privilege to officially welcome you as a charter member of the newly created 1896 Society. Named in honor of CMU's first year of intercollegiate athletics, the 1896 Society will recognize those individuals that make commitments of $25,000 or more to CMU athletics. Members will receive exclusive benefits, opportunities, and recognition of their generous support. Chippewa Athletic Fund staff will be calling you in the near future to explain the 1896 Society in greater detail and discuss the many benefits included in your membership. Growing membership in this society is a top priority as we continue our efforts to invest in the success of Chippewa student athletes. We appreciate everything you have done and continue to do for CMU, and we are proud to welcome you as a charter member of this 1896 Society. Again, congratulations, thank you, and fire up chips. I do want to point out here the length for this campaign was so on point because we recommend for this kind of message keeping that between 30 seconds to a minute long um, and they had all of the information needed in that video letting people know there will be a call follow-up this is just a first touch point of many 
Um, but again, just really showing what the, do the donation is going towards in a time where they couldn't come on campus and see it for themselves. So I just thought this was an incredible, incredible video uh, for CMU. And I think it's just the first of many to come. And I really appreciate if Jamie is on this call. Thank you so much <laughs> for allowing me to pick your brain for a little bit last week. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and move into admissions. But let me go ahead and take some, some questions. Um, since we have largely uh, donor relations people here, I don't want to take up too much of your time uh, with uh, admissions questions. Make sure I'm not missing any in the chat here. Q&A looks good. We got all of those answered. And I'll give it just a moment. I'm going to take a sip of water. If you're still typing a question, I'll give you just a moment to, to finish those. Awesome. I'm going to continue. Feel free to keep typing those, and we will uh, get to those questions and answers at the end. But let's go ahead and hop into just a quick session on the communicating with potential students, uh, what that can look like. Oh, looks like we had some questions already. Okay. Um, has anyone sent video requests to donors? Um, that's a really great question. I, I will put that out to uh, the group. Um, has anyone tried sending video requests to donors? I've definitely seen that for giving days as they're like building up hype and, and requesting donor stories to share. You know, why do you give to your organization um, and having them share their story? So I've definitely seen that. I'd love to hear more um, if there are some successes or maybe some tips and tricks that people have learned from doing that uh, within our group today. Someone asked, what are your suggestions for not causing burnout from administration with video requests? That is an excellent question. Um, I think the biggest thing is making sure that you have a plan in place uh, before uh, you start requesting videos. Um, you know exactly what video you want which student to record um, so that you're not having to go back and, and ask a re-record, be like, oh, we actually need to speak to you know, this part of student life as opposed to uh, this part. Um, so just having a, a really firm schedule in place will be so helpful uh, before you start reaching out to those students. And then I think another great tip um, is just using that reminders. Um, when you set up a video campaign within uh, Thank You, you have the option to add a due date and set up those automated reminders. Um, I think that's a great way for you to just set it and not have to keep reminding them. This is just gonna automatically uh, ping them. You can change the subject line for that. So it's like, you know, one week to go, two days to go, please submit this video, <laughs> let's go. Um, so you, you're not, the weight is not on you to, to keep sending those reminders. And I think three reminders is definitely a valid um, uh, amount of reminders for students as they are still studying, they are still you know, dealing with a world on fire. <laughs> so um, I hope that's helpful. If anyone else has any tips how you um, keep your students engaged um, and you're, you're not, um, when you reach out, it isn't an off-putting thing. It's a, oh, I get to uh, make this for our donors or I get to, uh, speak to our alumni for this video. I think getting your coaches and um, leadership involved with that so they recognize that name is going to be really helpful. Someone asked, can I get a why I give message? Um, I don't know if I have any examples. Um, if you don't mind uh, just emailing me, and I'm going to have my email in the uh, last slide, uh, just emailing me to remind me to, to look into that. I don't have any off the top of my head to, to share with you guys. Awesome. I'm going to, like I said, blow through these slides just to uh, give a little context and then um, some examples I, I, that I think are still really applicable to donor relations as well, especially one from uh, Northern State Arizona, uh, because they are doing some phenomenal things with personalization over there. So I want to share that example for sure. Uh, similar to donor relations, it's really important to look at what touch points potential students are losing, um, and that's still games, campus tours, uh, things of that nature, and looking into what those touch points accomplished. And for the most part, it's answering their questions and letting them decide, is this somewhere I can see myself attending next year, even though it will look completely different, hopefully, in the next year. Um, so that's just a, a struggle to communicate. Uh, not in person, and that's what a lot of organizations are having to do 
uh, with their large their large uh, admissions days being canceled, the campus tours probably, if they're happening at all, are very, very small. Um, and then from there, similar to our donor relations slide, how can we translate those events into video? Um, and that can look like a check-in from a student athlete. And this speaks to uh, the question that we just asked, how do we avoid burnout? I think that's also uh, in tandem communicating with your admissions team as well, making sure that maybe you're not reaching out to the same students for the same content, that you have a wide pool. Um, just making sure that you are working as, as a team to, to reach out to current students and get that video content. And I think a lot of uh, donor relation content can be repurposed into admissions content as well, uh, because in those videos, hopefully students are talking about how amazing your organization is, how much they love uh, playing their sport at your organization. So hopefully you can kind of repurpose those, maybe recut some things, maybe take out the thank you donor at the end um, and use those videos for admissions or marketing purposes as well. Um, and then finally, just a, a coach or member of leadership reaching out uh, either to lead a virtual tour or as I said, I'm gonna show you an example of a really personalized outreach uh, from a coach. And I just think at, at any cost, <laughs> really, putting your, trying to hone in on that personalization is going to be the most uh, important part of your communication. It's gonna be the thing that you're gonna get the most feedback from. It's what is gonna make you stand out, not only with donors and alumni, uh, but with potential students as well. And similar uh, to donor relations, I think this is gonna be a time where we're gonna have to think outside the box when it comes to admissions videos and admissions communications. Um, and so how, how can you be proactive answering potential student athletes' questions? Um, what do they want to know? And how can you get that information to them? Preferably through video, because that's what they'll watch. <laughs> to be honest, they will not read as much as they will watch a video. And then quickly through here, before we go on to just those examples, and then the thank you toolkit, is any updates from campus leadership on how your organization is handling COVID-19 is going to be really helpful, especially for those in the final leg of applying, or maybe they have already applied or been admitted. Um, these are gonna be really, really important uh, to let them know that their health and their safety are top priority for your organization. And again, you can send that in an email, but it's most likely going to be seen if it's sent through a video. And then one thing I think would be really amazing, this is something we haven't seen yet, we've seen kind of glimpses of this, um, but starting a recruitment series so students can expect these videos weekly or monthly, um, interviews with current student athletes, um, answering very specific questions like what does this part of student life look like? Um, similarly, interviews with coaches of what are you most looking forward to uh, when games are back in session? What is the thing that you love about uh, the games and the training. And then any, any personalized outreach from your admissions contact. Um, preferably, you are, you're already emailing, you're already calling, and following up with those emails and calls with a personalized video is just gonna make your organization stand out above the rest. And I won't play these videos, I, I wanna uh, be courteous of your time, um, but they are linked here, and like I said, I'm gonna send the slides so you'll have access to these. Uh, this is a virtual event invite, so I think it's still really applicable to donor relations, and it had an incredible 60% open rate. And on top of that, 50% of the people who were invited via this thank you actually attended the event. Um, so that was just incredible numbers. And on top of it, it was Rachel, who is the video feature here. This is her very first thank you, and she absolutely killed it. So highly recommend uh, checking that video out. Oh, Caitlin has, oh. Yes, absolutely. Caitlin asked if we can play that video. If there is crowd demand, I am here to serve. So we'll go ahead and play that video here. If I can get the audio to go. 
Hi, my name is Rachel Butler and I'm your Drake University admissions counselor. I'm really excited about getting to know you and learning more about your college search process. I would also like to take a moment to invite you to an online program that we're holding this upcoming Monday night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. This program was specifically designed for juniors and sophomores to give you a better glimpse of the Drake University experience. During this program, you'll learn the highlights of Drake University, um, learn more about the application process. You'll even get an opportunity to meet current Drake students so that you can learn more about their experiences on campus. Um, I would really love to have you attend this event on Monday night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can register by clicking the link below in the register here button. And listen, if you're not able to make it on Monday night, please do send me an email back. I would love to set up an individual appointment with you to get to know you better and to learn more about your college search process. I really hope to hear back from you and hopefully see you Monday night. So a lot of things that I really love about this video is just her excitement level. And that's something that can translate to whatever kind of video that you're sending. Um, if it's a thank you, if it's an event invite, um, just the, she's like bubbling with excitement for these, these students to attend this event. Um, and if you are holding virtual events for donors and alumni, maybe it's updates on how campus is doing, um, just translating that same amount of excitement is really, really important. Um, and then the second thing I love that she does is she calls out that register button in the video. Um, and that just highlights it yet again. It, I know it feels a little bit like a YouTuber, like, comment, subscribe, but it is really important just to, to highlight that video and highlight the, the call to action button there beneath it. And then the next thing I wanted to, to touch on, and this is a very, very short one, so I am gonna play this one as well. And this is a NAU follow-up, um, their soccer, women's soccer coach. Um, she had you know, a, a list of calls to make that day and actually followed up with each of the students uh, with a quick video of saying, hey, this is what we talked about, um, and, and calling them out by name. Um, and I just think it's so important, whether it's a potential student or a donor or alumni or a student athlete that you're reaching out to for video content, that it's really important that they feel seen and heard. And this video just nails it. And it nails it, and that's so much pressure to put on 20 seconds of video, but I'll show it to you and I think you'll, you'll see what I mean. Hey Trin, um, hope you're enjoying your day. I just wanted to pop in here and say thank you for our conversation yesterday. I really enjoyed your time um, and I just wanted to let you know that I'm really excited to build this relationship with you. Um, but I hope you have a great day and we'll chat to you soon. Bye. Yeah, just a really personalized, she's looking at her phone. She just filmed this on a, a smartphone and just calls them out by, by name, um, each of the, the girls that she was following up with for the women's soccer team. And I think that's more important now than ever, especially if um, you know coming to meet the team and meet the coaches in person isn't as feasible. Just making sure that you guys stand out, that your um, admissions, that your donor relations is very personalized, because uh, that is going to put you miles ahead um, if, if a donor and a potential student feel seen. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into more specifics, kind of ground ourselves in what, what you have available, available to you and how you can make these campaigns happen. And then we'll kind of end with Q&A um, and I'll leave my contact information on that last slide. So feel free to follow up with any other questions that you have. So the three things I really wanted to highlight, highlight whew, let's get into the end of the afternoon here. The three things I wanted to highlight here are the video requests highlighting your share button and custom merge fields. Now video request is an enterprise feature. It might be something that you need to add onto your subscription. So feel free to, to go on your portal. If you click that create new campaign button and there's an add on ribbon on video request, it just means that it's not currently in your subscription, but feel free to reach out, get more information on how that works. And if it is, I highly encourage you to take full advantage of this uh, coming fall 2020. Uh, to get videos from donors, from alumni, uh, from current student athletes, uh, hear their stories as far as, uh, especially with current students, what does campus look like? What does your life as a student without athletics look like? 
um, and having those ascend to donors uh, to you know, put a face to what their donation is going towards. Um, so those video requests, like I said, are a really easy way for you to do that. Uh, you no longer have to set up a time with the student or have this email back and forth and set up a drive and then text the file. You don't have to worry about any of that uh, with video requests. You can simply set up the campaign it can be a list of maybe 10 to 50 student athletes that you're gonna kind of cast a wide net for and see what, what videos you get in return. Um, and then have that uh, text and the script ready for them. I think starting with the fact that the semester sucks. <laughs> I think that's a really uh, good way to start uh, your, your video request, um, just to let them know that you, you know what the situation is and you know if, if they're working from home, if they are uh, you know, not able to record a video, kind of request that they just let you know, you know, treating them very <laughs> like humans and letting them know you completely understand where they're coming from is a really great way uh, to start those requests. And then they'll have a link uh, underneath that uh, script. They can click that and record either from their phone, from their webcam, um, and have it saved directly into your thank you library. And what's also really great about video requests, and I don't think a lot of people know this, um, if you are going into your video library, you go to that video request folder, and you don't quite like the video. There's something quite is off. Maybe they might be wearing another school's t-shirt, and you're like, no, you can't do that. Maybe the lighting's off. Maybe they're really far away from their microphone. Whatever it is, um, you can always delete that video, and it's going to prompt you with, with an edit response. So it's, it's going to send them a follow-up, whatever you decide to put in that box there. You know, if it's can you stand in a better lighting situation? Can you get a little bit closer to your mic? Um, whatever it is, that's going to automatically send them an email to let them know, hey, can you re-record this video? So just another way to eliminate some steps for you there. You can do that all within Thank You. And then the second thing here is just highlighting that share button. Um, most of the videos that I've highlighted today, they call out their call to action button. Um, and maybe that call to action button is driving them to a donate page. That's great, make sure that that is front and center, that they, are know, they know where to donate and they know it's right there for them. But if there is no call to action button, if you're not directly sending them to a donate page, um, making sure to highlight that share button. Um, if it is a update, if it's a birthday message, if it's something that's more fun and that you want to kind of get the word out there, Make sure that in your video you're calling that out. Uh, sometimes people miss that as they're scrolling down, especially if there's a really long description beneath the video, if you have more information that you're including. Just make sure that they're aware that that button's there and that you would love for them to share it. And then finally, custom merge fields, and this is a fairly new thing. Um, if you are a donor relations portal, if you are an admissions portal, you're gonna have things like major, last donation, uh, but sport is not, is not a merge field. Um, so that might be something that's worth creating if you wanna know where their donation is going towards, which, which sports team, uh, which building. You can always add in the custom merge field that you'd like to include there. And for admissions, um, definitely including a sport merge field will be very helpful. I'm sure you have a major um, and graduation year, but also including that sport uh, column will be really helpful as you're following up. Um, and if you are trying to attempt personalized video, but name by name is not really feasible for you and your team, it's always great to, to personalize it by sport. Um, if you are reaching out to a group of soccer uh, potential students, having them group together and making that video just for soccer. Um, so it's Again, not as daunting as a, as a name by name, but it is still really personalized to what they're coming for um, at your organization. And then I wanna highlight very, very quickly, um, dynamic personalization. Again, this is a add-on, so not included in your subscription, but it is a really great way if you are struggling to find a way to replace a really major event in your calendar, maybe it's a gala, a meet and greet, something that isn't, isn't just a day-to-day -day or you know, it might be a giving day that you're trying to completely rebrand, um, this might be a really great solution for that. It's a, kind of a replacement for direct mail as direct mail is not as feasible at the moment. And we're actually gonna have a webinar next, oh, it's tomorrow, webinar tomorrow, <laughs> which I'm also leading. So I completely understand if you don't wanna listen to me for another hour tomorrow, but I am gonna send a link to register that for that event. 
then I'll be following up with a recording and of course the slides. So you'll have all of the information and, and the pricing. Um, so you can have all of that ready to go if you are even remotely interested in learning more about that. I'd highly encourage you to register for that event as well. And with that, let's go ahead and hop into q and I'm going to jump into the chat and see if anyone was able to speak to um, donor relations, if they are, are using video requests to actually reach out to donors. Um, I'd love to hear if someone's using that for that. Um, and if you would like access to your microphone, I'm happy to give that as well. But that is the end of the official webinar. So if you have no more questions, um, I will officially dismiss you. That seems too weird. You're free to go. Um, and I will be following up with the slides and the recording for the event as well. So thank you all for coming. I appreciate you.